This is Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com, and today I have the new AT&T QuickFire. It's a brand new QWERTY messaging phone from AT&T, uh, self-branded. It's actually built by UT Starcom, a company that builds devices for other carriers too, like Verizon. The QuickFire is a kind of bulky device. It's about um, 18 millimeters thick, and it's meant to compete with the Sidekick line from T-Mobile. And you can see it has a very similar form factor to the Sidekick slide, and a very complete four-row QWERTY keyboard. The display on the QuickFire, on the other hand, though, unlike the Sidekicks, is a touch-sensitive display. It's even a capacitive touch-sensitive display, like that on the iPhone or the T-Mobile G1, which uh, we really like. In terms of the design, pretty straightforward. You know, nothing too flashy, even a little Spartan looking, a little rugged looking, um, though it has no particular rugged aspects to it. The design of the Quick Fire is pretty straightforward. It has some nice color accents, uh, available in orange, green, or a gray accent. Kind of um, a rough looking design. You know, the heavy lines, not, not real smooth looking, not real polished looking, but um, very functional. You can see there's dedicated camera key, voice dialing key. On the side here we've got volume controls. Up top we have a single connector that protects the micro SD card slot, which supports micro SDHC high capacity cards. This is an 8 gig card in there, though it doesn't come with it. There's also the power USB connector here. There's also a dedicated lock and power key up top. Feels solid, weighs about 136 grams, I believe. Keyboard keys have a nice feel to them, but as you might see a little bit later, they tend to double press. Uh, we're not sure what's going on there. But I like the package and I like the looks overall. Once we boot up the phone, you can see the nice QVGA resolution touchscreen display. Touchscreen is not as responsive, or perhaps at the software, but um, at times it doesn't seem to acknowledge presses. Now, it works in general pretty well. But scrolling can sometimes be difficult and a little counterintuitive. uses an on-screen back button for moving backwards in the menu system. Shortcuts up here on the home screen. We can pull up the dial pad. Hit the green button to dial. Touch screen here for turning the speaker on. Or to pull up the dial pad and just hit the red button to hang up. Music player. We already have music loaded onto that 8 gig card that we stuck in the device. You can see that the phone in general is slow sometimes. Um, it's going to update the music now, check and see if there's any new tracks. This could take a little while. You can see there are some definite problems with delay and lag on the device. Use the volume control to turn off the volume. In addition to wired headphones, it also supports Bluetooth stereo, which is handy considering there's no 3.5mm jack to be found on the device. You can actually do other things in the phone while music's playing.
This button down here always brings up the shortcut menu. Red button takes you back to the standby screen in general, but when you're running an application like the music player, it takes you back to that app. Now you can see we're back at the standby screen. The browser on the Quickfire is a full HTML browser. It's a little bit difficult to navigate. You can see we have the Mobile Burn website up. It's not completely rendered properly, but again, the counterintuitive scrolling, you move in the direction you want to scroll as opposed to grabbing the page and moving it. There are different zoom levels. You can put it at the 100% level. You can see that the text is clear and everything, but it's not really something you can read at this point. It does work in landscape mode, which is a little bit better for many stories, but you're still going to have to mess around with the zooming a bit. And it's never really going to be that easy. Reasonably full featured. Try to pull up the home page. You can see it's a lot of work to get somewhere. And it's not always easy to get a link. Can report that the phone has pretty good 3G reception though. Nice strong signal, pretty quick. Orange bar down here indicates it's still loading. So you can see it looks mostly right, but not exactly right. Overall, it's not bad for an inexpensive device like this, but um, it's not going to give you the iPhone experience if that's what you're looking for.